Thanks, Basil. I just want to give you a bit of an insight into the Saturday afternoon team. We're a bunch of unique individuals. Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Unique Individuals podcast. The boys are back in the studio. What a week it has been. It is a Friday afternoon. How are we going, lads? Going well, mate. Should be an absolute ripper of an episode and definitely cannot wait. Yeah, good to be back and uh, looks like it'll be an absolute belter, so let's get into it. Yeah, no, good to be here. Happy to be here, lads. Really keen for it. No, it's great. Great to be back. Um, as usual, uh, we'll get started with, I guess, what's been happening with us recently. Uh, it's been a big week for all of us, really, with a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I guess we'll start with Connor, mate. Uh, how's your week been? Yeah, no, it's it's been pretty good. Um Pretty standard. It's good just to get back in the swing of things. I think I've got into a better routine with um with classes and stuff and looked at a few assignments and been busy trying to get interviews and things like that. So uh been good, but I've got one thing highlighted probably here. Uh last Friday, so after we did the podcast, yeah, it was last Friday. Um went to the Sporting Globe for the third time during the week. I know we talked about that a lot last week in my love of the Sporting Globe, but Went to the the Pointing Valley one, the one that's not quite as good um, as Northland. But, yeah, um, there was obviously a few people I'm going to Bali with that are reasonable mates with and I know already, but there was a few people that I got to meet and they were really good. And, um, yeah, it was good just that it could distract away from the massacre over at Marvel and um, watch the first 10 minutes of yeah, the Richmond Bulldogs game. And I uh, didn't want to go any further, but I think Blair will touch on that um, in greater depth. But, yeah, that's... That's really all I've been up to. Other than that, just working a bit on a few assignments, getting interviews for feature articles. But uh, no, it's been good and starting to feel a bit, yeah, I don't know, a bit more comfortable with all the classes and stuff. Yeah, and uh, how many times did you go to the Sporting Globe this week? Um, none, I don't think. <laughs> Gee, that's a record. <laughs> I'm just, just trying, I'm just trying to think. Well, I'm always like, nah, none, but then, oh no, there's that one time, but no, that. No, not, none at all this week so far. I reckon this week's really flown by for me, but um, yeah, I had to sort of get away from it just for a little bit. You know, I was starting to consume my life a bit too much, Mansell. Fair call then. No, we'll get into uh, we had a blend now. Uh, saying that, uh, saying that you went to the Dogs game. Uh, what was that last Friday? Mm, uh, yes. Not a great, not a great game for the uh, for the Tigers. You were there in the stands. Um, Pretty uh pretty active on Twitter as well, um, expressing Ooh, yeah. your thoughts and opinions on the uh, performance of the Tigers. Uh, I guess yeah, how was that? And then the rest of your week, how that, how's that been for you? Yeah, look, I'd be lying through my teeth if I said it was good. Um, it was one of the more tough outings I've I've had. Um, as most people know, Richmond us Richmond fans, we hate Marvel. So to go down there and uh, no wonder we hate it when we see crap like that because that first quarter, you know. If I wasn't with Mansell and Mickey, um, shout out to the boys, I would have, you know, been in horrendous nick, really. Um, if I didn't drive uh, to the station, yes, I would have been very drunk because that's the only thing, only way you can cope with stuff like that. Nine goals in the first, nine goals in the first quarter. 44 points at quarter time. Jesus, I, I don't know. It was one of the worst. Uh, I always pick the worst games to go to during the year. Like, you know. I just, yeah, not happy with it, really. Uh, pretty disappointing. I voiced my... Mansell looked across my shoulder and saw me on Twitter typing away and he had a little chuckle to himself and I said, yeah, mate, you know it's coming. Um, so a little screenshot in there, which I've never been that... I mean, I've never been that astounded. I've had to include a screenshot in my post <coughs> of the scores. But, yeah, um, nah, pretty ordinary. Jamar Jam- kicked four in the first and Connor and the boys back home in Hamilton locked him down and d- he didn't get a kick against Hamilton under 16, so, yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, Connor? Yeah, no, I am, um, like like I said, very glad that I was uh, at dinner and somewhat occupied and really didn't have to focus on the game, but I kind of watched the first 10 minutes here and there, and every time, like, I looked up, they had the ball inside 50, and the fact that you might, you let, they kicked so many out the back as well. I think that's the most frustrating thing, like, really basic defensive I know, errors that you can't really make as an AFL side we made. And that's how it used to be. I mean, way back, it was, you know, it was pretty normal to be down by 44 points at quarter time. But, yeah, very frustrating. I know we're missing a few players, but you you can't put up something like that, especially when there's so much riding on that game. And you think guys like Dusty and Kochi, even if they're a bit, 
been injured, they might have been better than half of the blokes that were out there. But uh, I don't know, a few young fellas showed a bit, but yeah, I, it was really a, just a terrible game. Yeah, right here, Connie. You've uh, already spoke about your week, Max. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's just um, let's just wrap it up at that. Ooh. But um, obviously, Mansell was there, and I, I think I'll go to Mansell on this one. I think, to be honest, I held my emotions pretty well in the first quarter. I was pretty frustrated as anyone would have been, but from then on, I sort of just sat in silence pretty much and watched. Uh, we kicked a goal. I didn't really celebrate. Obviously, not much point. But uh, yeah, you thought I was all right, Mansell? Yeah. Well, um, funny you touch on uh, being silent. I felt like I was in a library sitting in between two Richmond <laughs> supporters. But um, but yeah, no, I thought you held yourself uh, pretty well. I mean, um, you know, obviously Connor came to the corresponding game at the start of the season, and um, and yeah, and um, yeah, safe to say, uh, you were probably a shadow of how he was on that day. <laughs> was so. that the game that was raining that? Yeah, Richmond lose by three. They, was, they lost by five points. That was maybe the most frustrated oh, I've ever yeah. been. Like that was a bad one. That was round five, like early. Yeah, yeah it was early was in the round, season. Round four, the last game, uh, Winchy played before Keithy stepped on him, the coward. But um, <laughs> no, no. That, that's not really reflective of my emotions during some games. But oh, I don't know. I can only yeah. imagine how Blair was feeling when you're getting pumped like that. Let alone <laughs> when I had four. Like that, we lost like by four points that game, and I was still nearly tearing my hair out. I had a message from Connor actually. 10 minutes into the game, game starts 7.50, 10 minutes in, I've got a message from Connor that says, sorry, mate. And, and, then, and then I get... <laughs> I I said, at 8 o'clock, it's like it's, it's like it's 8 o'clock I'm like, oh, pretty rough start. You know, we, we can't really play better. worse. Hopefully it gets better, And then mate. I just get another message from Connor thinking it's someone giving me a crap. Sorry, mate, just a bad one to go to. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, nice. I'm like yeah, thanks, ten, Connor. Ten minutes, it was like 8.10. I was like, oh, sorry, mate, this is terrible. It's a, it's a one-off shocker, but... Um, it wasn't. We've done it a couple of times in the last two months now against Brisbane as well. But, but yeah, Richmond don't normally lose by too much. They're normally in most games. Bit of um, a shout out to Mickey though, because yeah. Mickey, you know, he he's a Tigers man too, and he handled it well. Um, you know, very silent, like Mansell said. But what? There's not much to say, you know, when it gets <laughs> yeah. to like that. But on to the, on to the well, rest of the week. Well, yeah, just um, bef- just before we go there, <laughs> um, uh, it, okay. it, it ended up it ended game. up being a long ended up being a long night in the end. Um, you know, we yeah, obviously true. I, yeah, true. I forgot to yeah mention we, that uh, we had uh, had the game obviously, and um, you know, as Blair and Mickey were, they wanted to get out of there straight away. Um, I think we had a think. limping man so slowing us down, but yeah. we worked hard. Yeah, and the night went very ordinary. I mean, if when you lose like that, you just want to go home and go to sleep and forget about it, and hopefully not have nightmares about it. But unfortunately, I got home at about twelve thirty or twelve forty a.m. And that was leaving straight from the footy. Um, we left from there, buses replacing trains. Uh, we walked a crap Marvel Stadium. You got to walk to Southern Cross. Can't just get on Jollymont. Just got to walk to Jollymont from the G. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just through, <laughs> through, the, through the car park. It's a bit of fun, you know. <laughs> but anyway. And yeah, then, yeah we'd be got... closer to the Southern Cross from Marvel than it would be from oh, Jollymont to the G. Oh, I piped down. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, what you tell us, man? Yeah, so um, On so <laughs> so pretty much filling in the blanks. Um, you know, we had to walk over the other side of the ground to get to um to get to the station, and obviously, you know, I think what forty thousand people there, and you know, a lot of foot traffic. We get over to Southern Cross. We're under the impression that trains are still running like normal, which because I had a look during the week and they were supposed to be running like normal. Turns out trains were only go- going to Clifton Hill, so um. So we're like, hold on a second, because there was one there, and we saw, oh no, that's just one train. The our our train will be coming. There's nothing going on. Then I had a look. Buses are replacing trains to Clifton Hill. We, we got there at eleven o'clock, and it was from eleven o'clock Friday night to last service on Sunday. So um, so yeah, so we had the train to Clifton Hill, um, and then every man and their dog were trying to get on the bus. Uh, there was. And exp- there was an express bus to Hurstbridge and there was a bus that stopped at every stop to Heidelberg. The most dangerous buses you've ever seen, really. Like, mm. the the dude driving ours definitely <coughs> wasn't qualified, no way. And we had people standing all down the hall. Like, it was just an overcrowded bus and I was like, you know, it's... One, one lady actually said, who was standing up on the bus, oh, we're looking out the windows, can't see anything but darkness. It's nearly midnight. She said, oh, I think... We might just be taking. It might just be driving us out to the middle of nowhere for a massacre. And I said, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, um, let's move on from Nothing's that. Nothing's worse than losing a game and then getting on the bus and sitting home. on the bus for an hour. You know, everyone's cramped up. Everyone Every stinks. Station. Everyone just oh, doesn't yeah. want to be there. No, yeah. it's worse. Why don't you just get the eighty six? 
Um, like it would have taken us two hours. We probably would have almost. I don't know. Front of well, look, it might have been quicker in the end. Yeah, but, but you, yeah. initially you think the train gets you straight back to McLeod yeah. where we parked and we're on our way. Oh, but yeah. once we got to Southern Cross, it turned to yeah, turned to absolute yeah. crap, really. Yeah. But anyway, that's just a night yeah. I want to move on from. I'd, and, I'd never want to read. And the fact is, as well, yeah. the bus didn't even take us to where we were. We had to get an oh, Uber from Heidelberg to McLeod. We literally had to book an Uber as we were about to pull up. I'm like, yep, yeah, we're there. We had to wait. Luckily, two minutes came straight away. Then, yeah. Got got to McLeod, um, drove back to uni. I got my car, drove home, got like, home at one in the morning. Yeah, yeah, to put it simply, like we got, we walked, got the train, got the bus, got an Uber, got back to my car and drove back to uni, then got to Mansell's car and then he drove back home. So <laughs> it's just a absolute stuff yeah. around, but yeah. we'll move on from that because um, yeah. we'll, we'll chat about basketball in a minute, but... Uh, obviously, just a quick one. We'll also all sort of touch on this, but Inner Sanctum, uh, big news in that us boys are, are joining on to that um, as sports journos and uh, going to be churning out a few articles in the future. So I'm um, excited to be part of that. Um, shout out to Hutto and Mansell um, and, and the rest of the crew. Obviously, quite a warm welcome for myself, um, mixed with a bit of abuse, but we like that. <laughs> uh, but no, that's that's good. Really excited to be on board and can't wait to get into that. And other thing, I uh, actually went to Stolly's last night just for a little feed, uh, just jazzing myself. Palmer night, actually, on the Thursday night. 17 bucks? Bargain. Uh, $20. Oh, um, 20, mate. <laughs> just oh, don't... Inflation, mate. Don't it's pretend good. you know. I was pretty sure it was... Seven, no, it's 20. It's, uh, pretty, things oh, it's have like gone Palmer's up. The oh, mate, right? they are massive. Yeah, right? yeah, Come yeah, out. Incredibly large. I had a real crack. I hadn't eaten really all day, so I was in preparation. Yeah. And uh, got, I'm going to say, like 80% of it down. And then, um, and then Jazz fought hard as well, but there was a bit left over, and we had, you know, fought hard. We had basically a whole Palmer really on the plate, and actually got the. Uh, I asked for the little doggy bag, and pathetic, pathetic, and um, oh, that's massive. That's and massive. I had it for lunch this, uh, yeah, this Arvo, so unreal. But yeah, do you have a record of having one whole Palmer for one night? What's your What's your record? Um, Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> is, that not, is that not very I clear? Think it means how many how many palmers have you completed? Have you completed in, time? in like one? any time? Yeah, for like any like have you ever completed one palmer? Have I ever finished the whole palmer? Yeah, ever. Um, yes. Hugo yeah. was witness that Sporting Globe. Well, they're not what's, very your, big. what's your career tally? One in a night. Yeah. yeah no, you like don't have two in a night. Like ever. I know. Oh, like the, my career record of palmers I've ever consumed. No, but consumed on the one night. Not like you've had to eat in the, on another day. Oh, oh no, definitely. Yeah, no, I've got night. I've got the one down, just the one. Yeah. So just one. Yeah, okay. I've I've got one down before on the night. Um, I have went three in three days before, but I mean, actually, I've went th- uh, four in three days before. Uh, one lunch and three dinners, but that was up in Darwin. That was back in the heyday, <laughs> you know. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I got, I got I fought hard. It was actually a fair crack, but if anyone out there knows though, Stolly's palmers are massive. Like they're I had a pint of Coke to wash it down and, yeah, happy days really for me. But, um, yeah, been on the mic far longer than – I'm starting to be a bit of a Connor and Mansell, so we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on, we'll move on off. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, um, well, yeah, as um, your voice touched on, um, you know, I have done some recruiting and got you guys uh, on board at the Inner Sanctum and um, – Safe to say, you know, welcome aboard. Um, you know, I told Hutter the news and he was that chuffed. It was, yeah, it's just amazing. But, um, Owen, I did notice you, ha- you have now taken it off the run sheet, but you had brutal sanctum welcoming. Um, Not okay. to you, to <laughs> Yeah, my, I, I only took it off because Blair touched on it. And how, yeah. Because, how, yeah, well, let's finish what you Yeah, yeah I was going to say, because I saw it under your name and I'm thinking, I'm like... You were probably the only one that yeah. didn't have the brutal welcoming, but um. no, I the a couple of things in my section that I put down that don't quite relate to me. There's a bit of you know, bit of um, other boys in it, but for that one, yeah, yeah, Blair got. Well, you were questioning him, um, man. So you were yeah. championing me, calling some, me trooper, trooper, <laughs> champ, and some of the questions I didn't were. I say champ. Oh, I said trooper. Nah, uh, uh, Hado, Hado Hado called him. Oh, no, Hado, Hado trooper. Any I mean. chance to try to stitch us up? Like even cheese and bacon got and so most of it was yeah. just false accusations from Mansell. Mario any chance Kart, to do what he did. Any it. chance to get at you, like you know, 
I nearly mean, ended my career. For I, it. Nearly, I was going to say. So yeah, to um to let everyone else know um about pretty much how the process works. So, you know, I obviously invited these boys to uh, to join the Inner Sanctum, and you know, whenever there's a new um, new person on board, they're sort of like an initiation or like an icebreaker type thing. So, ask them a few questions, you know, get to know them better and everything like that. And um, for the first time, I was given the honours of um of asking the questions and you know i wanted to make you guys feel welcome and um you know prove that it's a safe space and bit of a bit of a trustful exercise you know so um you know hang some shit but then um but then realize you know it's all okay it's um you know just nurture them through the process and um yeah so I gave a bit back to you, Manchester, though, and yeah. I think the fellow Satanists yeah. liked a bit of they that. Liked they liked it. They liked that dynamic yeah. as a quote um, because, yeah, they. Yeah. I was I was not going to just yeah. lay down that easily and cop it. You know, I'm I'm a big recruit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the hunt so, or be hunted type you know, of stuff. Hard, Hardo's been chasing me up for months. He's been trying to get – he's been linked up, you know, in the LinkedIn and – you know, I've just been hard to hold off. I've got other stuff on, but <laughs> no. no. <laughs> listen to you. Listen to oh, you. No. Come on. Uh, he, did, he did have that a big, he did have a bit of a rap for you, I will say, um, to sort of, yeah, sort of heighten your self-indulgence there. But, um, but yeah, you know, he did say as soon as I said that, you know, Blair and the crew want to join, he goes, he's like, fuck yes. He's like, mate. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> and I quote, and go. I quote, fuck yes. He's like, I thought, you know, I, I thought again. he's <laughs> like <laughs> with um he's like with uh, Scribe Sports though. I just wasn't sure. That's why I was a bit hesitant. But then now that he's on board, he's like, mate, I'm is like, yeah, I, I can't wait. So and he's like, and is that the same case with all the boys? He's like, I love how he, he's a you know big fan of the party. He said, love how you guys are called the Unique Individuals Podcast, and um and yeah, wanted to get you guys on board. And yeah, no, it's yeah. it's it's pretty um you know pretty heartfelt stuff really. Yeah, just um, a quick one, man. Yeah, so I, I thought icebreakers. I thought the whole point was that whole point of that was to make you feel a bit more comfortable, a bit but more welcomed. For me, it, it <laughs> certainly didn't. I felt attacked. <laughs> But what, but what usually happens? Pizza shaved nut. There's shit else, mate. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. But what usually happens when Red ice breaks? Belly. It's warning signs. Oh, when God. ice breaks, right? Just in general, like you look at what what's happening in Antarctica for crying out loud. The ice is breaking over there, and it's a whole catastrophe. So, yes. you know, that's basically what it means. Before we move on, nah, it's good to be there. Good to be on there. <laughs> I have one thing, and this is totally random, aside from anything in a sanctum. Uh, just a little thing that happened this morning. I just found out. It's, it's just a little odd one. I was just scrolling through Instagram, see some footy photos actually um, on AFL posted for the footy focus competition, right? And I click on, I look in the comments because it's a good photo. I'm like, respect. Someone's like, someone commented and I'm like, hmm. And like, we'll name him, Jack Speechley from Mulgrave Cricket Club. I was like, Jack Speechley, I know that name. Clicked on his profile, the Mulgrave dude that, on the flag, whatever. He has one post in his public profile and it's the flag, right? That they beat us in. And, but this is where I'm really happy with my work here. The caption, right? For the flag, the caption for his only post in quotes, quotation marks, previous premiership favorites from my <laughs> article. <right>? <laughs> 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 Hashtag. Economic firepower from the ball. Well, that's all it says, but that was, again, another quote in the article. Oh so, God. I mean, we're living in these guys' heads, really. Rent free. That is incredible. <laughs> Wait, that's, when was this posted? Like It was posted in March, and I've found it now. So, they yeah. they must have this... Well, they must have a group chat, but they must talk about your article. Oh, they and hate me, mate. <laughs> about you on a... Like they, they would be checking up on what you write on a daily basis. They'd yeah. be like, he's... Op- Blair Burns, he's got something up. Let's read it and let's try and pick out little things. So the next time we play him, we can quote him on this and that. And it was this. incredible. Coming into the game, I've never had anything like that. And for them to give me crap. Do you, do you have it on right now? Yeah, I've got, this is the post. Show us. Don't like it. I'm not, um, not going to like it. But Which one is he? He's the one with the long hair, the bowler. Um, yeah, the, the middle one? Or the, the he's a bit of a this coward. One. Sorry to say this that one. On I think he's... Um, nah, not the left. The took yeah. Cash, wasn't he? yeah. yeah. Oh. He's a bloke that looks like he's 14 years old. Yeah, yeah great call. Guy. So you wrote previous premiership favourites. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's... And, but like, I'm pretty happy with that. That's good publicity. You know, any publicity is good. Yeah. So, well, Scribe we... Sports is on fire. That's well, yeah. Um, you know, as we... <laughs> Made my day. As we sort of, you know, 
go through this. Um, Owen, as well, um, you've also got another bit of beef uh, in here that... So that's for the viewers, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you got, you got another bit trouble. of beef. You're in massive trouble. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got another bit of beef with, um, you know, I suppose one of our infamous lecturers. And no, no. You're no. getting this wrong. You're getting this wrong. No beef at all, actually. I can appear how it sounds. Yeah, but I, I probably wrote it, it, it wrong. Just, it just, yeah, I'm like, hold on a second. All right, well, Any I guess I'll counter. start. I've just read the wrong sheet. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll start with this um, for my section. But, uh, yeah, so obviously uni's happening. Um, Blair and I, we're in one class together, mobile storytelling. Um, and before that class, we have uh, media law ethics. Mm. Um, so we got a little five, ten minute break between classes. Blair and I head to the toilets. Obviously, to you know, you know, do do, 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 do what you have to do. Yeah, me, yeah. me look in the mirror. Yeah, like and Blair yeah. comes in, but not like doing it. He's just. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, this is just yeah. In in simple terms. Sorry, Jay. We went to the listening. bathroom. Just just before class, just to go to the toilet. No, there's no good way to put no, no, this. That's right. That's right. Okay. Anyway, so oh. I'm in the toilet, right? It's good, yeah. If you don't want to listen to this, viewers and listeners, you don't have to. It's but not what it sounds like. It's not what it sounds like. I'm in the toilet doing what I have to do. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking to Blair, who's like outside the cubicle, kind of just at the um, mirror doing taps, whatever. Yeah. yeah, taps. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about scribe sports. You know, we're going to get back on it and we're going to write, you know, start publishing articles and upstart's good. We're, you know, feeling comfortable there. You know, how are your interviews going? You got any you know, interviews lined up, blah, blah, blah. We didn't realise that there was another cubicle that someone was in. Mm, occupied. Yeah. Occupied. <laughs> anyway, we're washing our hands. Well, I'm washing my hands. We're about to walk out. The cubicle opens. <laughs> there is Evo. <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> Boys, how are you going? He's Boys, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, good, good. He's like, where oh. are you off to? I'm like, oh, we, I'm like, oh, we actually got you up next. And then he started chuckling. He's like, oh, 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 oh okay, I'll see you next. I'll He's see you in the next class. Lovely. Then ten seconds later, we walk out of the cubicle and we hear him laughing to himself again in the cubicle. in the bathroom <laughs> on his own, on his own, like a delayed laugh. It was so weird. And then and and awkward. But and then as we were outside in the hallway. He, the door's shut and we just hear him going, <laughs> yeah. and he goes, oh, oh God. And he's just laughing and he just says, oh God. And this is the thing. So now Blair and I are outside the cubicles, outside the toilets. We're walking to class, trying to get a bit of a head start on Evo, trying to talk about what just happened. He gets out of the toilets jogs, quick as anything jogs up and jogs almost right behind us. So we can't really have a private conversation about what just happened. It was the weirdest encounter. And he started talking to us again. It just really rattled yeah, it us. it rattled us a bit. But long story short... Um, yeah, just a bit of an awkward encounter. But class was good. And uh, yeah. we got a little group assignment that Blair and I are doing. Um, Shout out Mitchie Skipper. Yeah, about his uh, footy career. Um, but yeah, anyway, other than that, been yeah, playing was... footy. Um, had a good win last Saturday against Williamstown. Big win uh, down all the way there. It was a bit of a drive. Um, but yeah, great win. Uh, we are in the top four, which is really good. Uh, teams hit some really good form and... Um, Playing tonight, actually, Friday night, under the nice lights at tonight. Harry Trot Oval uh, against uh, Collegians. I'm there. Yeah, the Should boys boys good. getting down, which I appreciate. Um, it's good to have the support, so I'm um, looking forward to that. Yeah, massive game. It really is 50-50, I reckon. Both teams are... I mean, Collegians are last, but it's only because they came down from Div 2, so um, there's no real easy game in our, in our competition because all teams are... You know, competing for finals still, and it's going to be a tough month for us personally. We've got some pretty tough games coming up, but now nah, we've been in best form so far this year, and um, you know we're really hitting our hitting our strides. So now nah, it's good, and yeah, can't wait to play tonight and get your boys down and supporting. It's good. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, nah, looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it should be good. Obviously, a fair hike down there, but uh, next week Friday night game as well. So yeah. we're keen to Two get Friday around. nights in a row. Should yeah, we good. go back to back. Mm. Hugo, what's been happening with you, man? I've just been existing, really. Uh, <laughs> what he normally does. Nah, they nah, had me aunt and uncle down. Um, my aunt came down from Wollongong and my uncle came down from Canberra, so they were down for the weekend, which was nice. Got to see them. They got, saw us play footy and get the win on the weekend. Oh, good. Against Swinney, which was nice. So, yeah, I haven't done a lot, hell of a lot. Do you want to mention your birthday? Yeah, you? maybe. <laughs> I was just going to say I forgot about mate, that. This is one of the weeks that you've had a bit going on, mate. Just take it. Take oh, yeah. Oh, just 
Well, I'd be birthday. <laughs> Good day. Yeah. <laughs> birthday was what, what did you do on your what, birthday? What did you get for presents? What kind of cake birthday did you was on have? A Tuesday, what did you do? How was that cheesecake after training? How <laughs> oh, was the cheesecake? Yeah. Yeah, it was good cheesecake. Homemade from mum. Oh, lovely. Smashed it out of the park. Beautiful cheesecake. Um, didn't do a lot on the Tuesday, just went to training. Another cheesecake. Yeah, but cool, like, when you woke cool, up. Any cool presents? Like, did you wake up and jump on mum's bed? It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, it, that's <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what you do on your birthday, mate. But, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I got a new hoodie, which the boys have seen. It's it's uh, the out. the third one to his there's collection. Bit, there's a bit yeah. of drip about it. A bit of drip with the old champ. champion jumper. Yeah. Uh, we we'll just call him champ now whenever he wears it. Honestly, uh, like your wardrobe must have like three things in it. <laughs> like, do you just use like a little drawer? Or <laughs> I got a little drawer for me socks and undies, and then just got my t-shirts. And shorts. So you got a yeah. jumper. Anything else? Oh, for presents. <laughs> I got a new Sharon actually. Oh, oh no, nice. new yeah. pill. New pill. So yeah, I'm keen good. to test that out. Need to get a pump. Yep. To pump it up. But Hopefully, key through the big sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Help with the goal kicker. Brutal. All oh, right, I'm not, I'm not coming after you, man. <laughs> so you're going to take things directly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, nah. Well, oh, oh, I got some chips. Chips. I'm happy with that. Like potato chips. Yeah, yeah. Honey. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> yeah, wrapped, wrapped up. Wrapped up. Yeah. <laughs> What is a little um, gift bag thing? He's got some tips. <laughs> okay. Deli, honey, soy, they hit different, yeah, don't they? they, they are, are, oh, if I could no, leave I, off anything for yeah, a small wife, I'd leave off that and Palmer's, I reckon. I, I got some new shirts as well. Oh, yeah. Update, update the wall. You gotta, so, gotta um, try them on at uni and show show the world? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, if I take the hoodie off, I'm probably wearing them. Um, I'm probably wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was, no, was trying to think. Don't think I got too much else apart from that, but that no, was good. Any new Saints merch or anything like that? No, nah, nah. He's got enough of that. No, he's, he's oh, already well, bought the shop. They sold out the ones it, I wanted. I missed out on the retro oh, jacket, which uh, I'm not happy with. But you recovered from like last, last last on the weekend, Saints' last result? Look, it had some positive signs. Um, our first half was extremely good. Our, we just got ran over, which was a bit disappointing. Um, wasn't too happy with our midfield. But... Uh, I wasn't too upset with how we played. It was more just the fact we got ran over. Mm. But, I mean, I'm confident this week, touch wood, but I'm still confident we can make the eight. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, but, like, if you don't, that's probably a game you look back on and think, geez. Nah, yeah, it's it, not the one we but, look back, but we look like back, it, back on the Hawthorne one. But it, but it stings. Yeah, I, I guess. But, like, yeah, it stings. But, to be fair, you're playing Carlton or informed team of the comp and I don't know what they were injected with, what speeches <laughs> they were given um, after... Big accusation. Yeah, uh, massive. After round 15 or whatever it was, I don't... We don't know what happened, but it's one of the more remarkable turnarounds you ever see and I actually want them to make finals now, Carlton, but yeah, I don't want them to do anything because, <laughs> you know, their fans are just <laughs> toxic, really. Um, no, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, well, I guess... Basketball is probably the only other thing we, we need to touch on, obviously. Um, yeah, we, we had uh, young Mitchell fill in. Uh, Owen, do you want to take the basketball chat for us? Yeah, or? if you want. Uh, yeah, no, good win uh, for us last Sunday night against the Donut Kings. Um, good fellas too. Yeah, yeah, good bunch of guys. All due respect, pretty mediocre opposition. But uh, good blokes. Good blokes. <laughs> in the same sentence, we've said good blokes and pretty mediocre. Yeah, yeah probably, that's tough. We probably could have gone on by more, but um, <laughs> we I don't know, we beat them. Fairly easily. No, it was good though. Like everyone contributed. Um, I think, yeah, it was a real good team performance. I think our ball movement was as good as it's been probably all year. And defensive um, efforts. Um, yeah. Ball movement. Defensive efforts as well. That, that's why they only scored, I think, 23 points. Um, just because, yeah, we're in their face for the whole 40 minutes. But um, no, it was good, good to get a win. Uh, we've got a few tough games coming up, but it's pretty tough competition. Div 2. But uh, I guess we'll give it our best. And uh, Mansell, hopefully you're back from injury. Um, yeah. Yeah, won't be back this week, but um, hopefully, yeah. Week after, maybe. Ho- yeah, hopefully after the bye, we yeah. should be. Got three already. more games. Oh, actually, uh, four more games. One, of, uh, five more games. One of them's a bye though. So, yeah. We'll take the win with the bye, but um, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got the mile high, mile high Wildcats. Who they're pretty uh, handy. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Yeah, they're third. Uh, <laughs> he's so he's so blunt on yeah. on the topic. Uh, they're third, we're Connor. fifth. They've lost four games, so you know if it bleeds, you can kill it. So <laughs> I think that's the mindset we're going with this week, and um, yeah, hopefully get a get a good win. But um, 
I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, we played some great basketball last week. So if we can continue that on, like, early in the season when we started winning, we got momentum and started playing some really good games. So hopefully we can continue that again. And we're pretty close to the top four. Not that it's all about making finals, but we're going to give ourselves a chance if we actually, you know, win a few games in the next five. So, yeah, that's it. it's good fun. Yeah. All righty. Uh, sport talk, I guess. Um, if we have time. Oh, no, I think <laughs> nah, so. It's on me. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously another round of footy action and um, obviously, you know, the finals are shaping up and some results are, um, are needing to go teams' ways in order for them, them to make the eight. The Collingwood Hawthorne game, because this was yeah. a big one. Yeah. Um, Collingwood now two losses on the trot. Is that mm. that's correct? Yeah, yeah, so two on the trot. Um, yeah, and this time against Hawthorne, um, Nick Dacos now mm. out for six weeks with a, uh, I think a broken knee cap. I want to say a fra- uh, hairline fracture. I think in the knee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously he's he's out for six weeks. Um, Nathan Murphy was supposed to be out for two to three weeks, but um, he's managed to get up for selection this week. I reckon, I reckon that guy's got to be one of the softest blokes to ever play AFL, Nathan Murphy. And he just gets in opposition face. You know, no wonder he gets slapped and hit because he's a pain in the ass. Like <laughs> he just, just gets into the opposition and, like, he just he rolls over. Like, I don't like him at all. I know he's a fellow redhead, but, like, <laughs> can't even... Yeah, he talks a bit weird as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you had a speech impediment when you were younger. No, but, like, he can, he can't really even talk. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I do not like that guy at all. But yeah, Collingwood, um, yeah, pretty shaky. Hawthorne, they've played some occasionally this year. They play some Solid really, really good games, yeah. but most of the time they played terribly against terrible opposition. Like, I think they, yeah, they play alright against the better sides, and then um, sort of um, piss it down the drain, I guess, against the weaker <laughs> sides. But um, well, yeah, I don't know. Collingwood in a bit of an interesting position now. I know they're still first, but like. You want to be in the right. You want to be in form in the right time of the year, and yeah, a lot of pressure on the game tonight against Geelong, and yeah, I'm probably going to back Geelong in later on. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a really big game tonight, which we'll touch on in a bit. But um, boys, I'll I'll ask you. Um, there's people out there saying Dacos can still hold on. He's done enough. Um, who wins the Brownlow for you, or does it change? Um, I mean, Dacos was probably leading by the length of the Flemington before. I don't reckon. Well, most people do. Uh, by, not by I that think, much. yeah, I, don't, I, I think he was in the lead, but not by that much. I think... So he's going to get overrun, I've reckon? always thought the Bont, even though the Bont's had... He's had really good games, but a bit inconsistent at times, whereas Dacos has always been around the, at least getting maybe a vote or two almost every single game. But I just think the Bont is the best player in the comp, and he, he would d- deserve the Brownlow, for sure. That's me, though. I mean. Yeah, do you, Connor, of, Connor and Hugo, it. yeah, Connor and Hugo. Do you think Dacos holds on, or do you think Track or Bont or someone else wins it? Uh, Graham Myers, Liam, may, Liam may, maybe Messi. for <laughs> Graham Myers. Bit of a smoky for all Australian. Obviously had a great year, but um, I actually reckon he gets overrun in in the last three games. I don't think he's in front by that much. It, it's it's obviously hard to tell, but if you look at the Brownlow predictor, which gives a it gives a reasonable indication. Obviously, not going to be hundred percent right. Stuff like that. Even guys like Lockie Neal have been slept on a little bit, and I think the Bond he sits uh, fifth in the Brownlow predictor, but I think he's going to get up there pretty high. And Petrarca as well. Um, he's at three dollars twenty five to win it, but he sits like seven for eight. So like. Yeah, but who do you pick though? Um. One bloke. It really depends what happens. Do you want more muscle action? If it really depends what happens in the next few weeks, but Taranto sits second on the Brownlow Mel prediction. So you're saying Taranto's win the Brownlow? I want to. I want you to lock in someone. Stop yeah, being a coward. I'm right going Timmy Taranto. Oh. If he plays, if he plays well the next his three second weeks, half of the year has been not. No, his last three games have been like okay. Before that, he was exceptional. Um, but look, he's a chance. If definitely, if we had won a few more games, without doubt, he's winning it. Without absolute doubt, because he's our best player every week. Look for him to have a massive game on Sunday. I'll tell you what, he'll come out and he'll be chomping at the bit. And um, <laughs> if he can pull in all the last three games, I think he probably wins it. Yeah. Hugh, who do you tip for the Brownlow? Rowan Marshall? Yeah, no, no, no bias. No, 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 no bias for me, but yeah. All no right, any nonsense and kill to play, who's going to win the Brownlow? Um, I think Zach Butters might. I still think he might. Okay. That When that play, what was it, 13 in a row? I reckon yeah. he'll accumulate a fair amount of votes in that period. 
we yeah. would be pretty hard to catch him. Can I change? Like, oh. I want Tim Taranto to win it, and I think he's a fairly good chance. Well, that's your prediction. Fairly good chance. I'll ask you who you think will win the Brownlow. I not want him to win. I think he's fairly yeah, good chance. Just stick with one. But I'm gonna go. I'll go. I'll go Bond. I think. <laughs> I, I think Bond. <laughs> that's not. That was the start of the question. You you dragged it on for five minutes. Bond. Bond is a really really good chance to win it. I want Tim Taranto to win it, but he's also a good chance. Mate, I want to grind. I didn't flip every time you I want Grian Myers to win it. Bont and Taranto tie for, tie for the Brownlow. Quote you, mate. Bont and Taranto tie for the Brownlow. They okay. both win it. Okay, okay I've heard it. Who's he going to pick next? Quite you. No, they're both going to win it. Who's okay? he going to pick next? <laughs> I didn't flip and flop. I said yes originally. Then I Dacos said no. Is, Dacos now is Now I've said done. yes, but I've stuck with it. <laughs> Dacos is done. He's a great player, but he doesn't quite strike me as Get Brownlow him. medals. Same with Hugo. I know he has those Get flaws as well. Get him off. Anyway, uh, yeah, to sort of move away from the Brownlow yeah. talk, um, you know, one part of Hawthorne's game that pretty much got it done against Collingwood. Collingwood only had three center clearances for the game. Whoa. Now, this was, I think That's it was worries. 14 to 3. Richmond would have more than that still. That's and, great. you know, looking at it, lo- looking at the numbers, Collingwood's, um, you know, Collingwood's clearance numbers were obviously, I think they topped, uh, they were leading in the competition for the first half of the season. And then now I think they're down to 18th after, you know, I don't know how long, but it's definitely over the second half of the Half of the year, um, boys. We've seen uh, Tom Mitchell get subbed out probably at least three of the last four weeks. Um, you know, who was obviously brought in for that reason, um, according to the club. Um, you know, I suppose what happens there? How do Collingwood fix this uh, this problem? Especially, you know, given they've got Geelong tonight, and then they've got um, you know another two top eight teams to finish up. Yeah, well, they got to turn around somehow. If you're losing the sides like Hawthorne and Carlton. Um, as the undisputed flag favourites all year um, on the trot as well. And three centre clearances, that's that's embarrassing really. Um, I, like, are they getting complacent in the midfield or what's going on? Because uh, you can't play out a game against a weak considered opposition and get three centre clearances. So I don't really know what the issue is, but they've got to sort something out because otherwise Geelong will pump them tonight. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, all right, we'll move on to, um, I suppose... A game that's close to Hugo's heart with uh, playing against uh, we playing against the Blues on Sunday afternoon, and oh, you you touched on no, it for two seconds. Talk about it because um, yeah, we we'll yeah. talk about it. But he summed up pretty well. We got to talk go about on. because there was one goal kicked out the half time from Saints. Now I know you said there were a lot of positives out of the game. One goal for, but surely that outrights well, all the positives. That's nah, that's concerning. Well, it's been our issue for like the last. I reckon since your whole history. Six, uh, not a whole history, but since 2016, that's been our Choking? issue. Choking? Well, a little bit. A little bit. No, really. The, <laughs> the AFL's robbed us of a few things. <laughs> I, I digress. Um, no, I think that's been our problem for the, sort of the last six, seven years has been our offence. But I still think, and the stats back it up this year, that we've been we've had the best offence in the league. Like We've conceded the least amount of points considerably. Um, I might butcher that word, but that's all right. Um, but yeah, our offense, and this is why I have hope around this group, is because defense is the hardest part of the footy. Is getting your defense and your defensive structure right, and the easier part is getting you, fixing your offense. So I still have faith in this group, but it was frustrating to watch only kicking one goal after half time, and I think we kicked one four mm. off the top of my head or mm. something like that. Yep, and you know. Max King, I don't think, should have played on the weekend. He looked underdone in terms of his aerobic fitness. Um, he wasn't really getting up the ground, and when he gets up the ground, that's when he's playing his best footy. He was sort of staying back, wasn't getting up the line to present that option. Yeah. But still kicked two, having said that, and looked pretty good in the early parts of the game. So it, it's I take the positives more out of that game than the negatives, but it is very frustrating. Yeah. How do you well? Quick one, Hugh. How do you think they find a balance between offense and defense? Because, like you said, they've been strong defensively for a few years, but particularly this year. Um, and a lot, a lot of that is Ross's influence. But how do you think they can find the balance? Because they've got enough weapons down forward. Um, is it a ball movement thing? I'm, I'm really not sure at all. Um, but how do you, how can they find that balance to actually be contenders? And not just stumble into the eight, maybe. Quick... Well, you got to remember though, like for the majority of our year this year, we've had five teenagers in our forward line. Yeah, it, it's so young side, gotta... but like they 
Got, when you've got... Look, this week will be the first time this year Tim Emery and Max King have played in the same side. It's and Tim Emery and his... Yeah, so and they're our best right. two key forwards. So when you haven't had that option, one-two punch available, and that both of them have been out for an extended period, you're going to struggle off to find goals offensively. Like, I think it's the last five years our club goal kicking has been won by both of them. Time before that, it was Josh Bruce in 20... 15, 2016, maybe. Well, that's but not five years ago, if that's what you're yeah, wondering. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, don't shoot the messenger. We but know what you mean. Obviously, you know, um, ranked first in the comp for um, points conceded, obviously um, very good defensive. But like you, when you're talking about the offensive, only, um, yeah, there's only three sides uh, worse than Saints on an off- on an offensive perspective of points scored, which is Hawthorne North and West Coast. Um, and then at Saints with points scored. So obviously, yeah, that um, there's a bit to be desired with um, you know score, the generating scoring opportunities yeah. and, and um, probably oh, the I little fleet enough scoring opportunities. It's, it's just probably just converting. converting and, yeah, you know, like I said, five teenagers for most of the year in your forward line. You're gonna have periods where you struggle offensively, just due to the, the lack of experience and physicality at times in that forward line. But you know, it's not all doom and gloom with our offense. I don't think. Yeah, it will help with Tim Memory, but like if you lose this week, then I don't know you're probably not making it, are you? So there's still like there's a lot riding on, particularly this week. I think. Yeah, the next two weeks, like if we leave it to Brisbane at the Gabba, we'll probably yeah. struggle to make it. <clears throat> That'd be tough. Yeah, Richmond, Geelong, and Brisbane to finish up for the Saints. Uh, not easy. So, to be honest, I think especially if Richmond and Geelong week. are very gettable. Both are marvel. Yeah, oh, gettable. Very, gettable. They're gettable. very gettable. But they they're, they're also Brisbane very. Brisbane at the Gab and not, but not they, so much. But they are, but you're always one of them, though, and you're in all sorts of trouble. Yeah. Like it's a if chance. If Richmond though. come out yeah. and play a good yeah. game, which they're due to at Marvel, I'll tell you what, we're overdue. I'm then, actually attending the game, so I'll have. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, might see you there. I'm there. <laughs> no, no I'm at that week after. Sorry. Hopefully, now the fact that we are pretty unlikely to make finals, we can sort of put a nail in the coffin for your season. But um, Do you want to move on to um, sort Tips. of yeah, tipping yeah. this round? Yeah, so uh, so the games this week, we as we touched on, Collingwood Geelong at the G uh, tonight. Um, then we have North and Essendon, Sydney Gold Coast, Brisbane Adelaide, Carlton Melbourne, which has been pushed back an extra 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes uh, for the Matildas game tomorrow night. Um, Western Derby uh, to round out Saturday night. Then we've got Hawthorne Dogs. Saints and Richmond under the lid and Port and GWS to round out the round. Owen, we'll start with you, mate. Uh, Your tips, please. All right. I'm going Cats. I'm going Dons. I'm going Sydney. I'm going Brisbane. I'm going Melbourne. I'm going Frio. I'm going Dogs. I'm going... I'm going Richmond. And I'm going Port. And I'm going to hand over to Connor. Uh, I'm going to go Geelong as well. Uh, Essendon, obviously they need a win. They'll get it done. Probably Sydney, playing pretty well at the moment, Sydney actually. And there's still a chance. Brisbane to beat Adelaide. Uh, I think Melbourne to beat Carlton in a close one. Fremantle to beat West Coast. Uh, I'm going to go Hawthorne at UTAS to beat the Western Bulldogs. Richmond and, yeah, Port Adelaide probably. <laughs> that Hawthorne tip could have been fueled by anger, I think, from last weekend. <laughs> but we'll, we'll move on. And, um, yeah, well, one thing about uh, Sydney and Gold Coast, Gold Coast have won four of the last five at the SCG. Um, here you go, your tips, please. Uh, I'll go to the Pies. I'll go North. Go to Swans. Go to the Lions, go Melbourne, I'll go Freo, Dogs, Saints, and the Giants. He's gone north. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I guess big week for the club with, um, well, Quarko recently come back, Benny Cunnington's last game, so, and they're due for a win if ever they're going to get up. I kind of hope they win so it's not left to next week and then they might knock us off, but yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Blair to round it out, mate. Yeah, so... Um, look, I've got a feeling Cats get up tonight as well. Uh, I'll go Cats, Essendon. Uh, I'm going to go Gold Coast. He interviewed Bailey Humphrey last night. He's had a fresh haircut, uh, shaved off the mullet. So he's going to be aerodynamic. Is it short? Yeah, he's, he's skinhead. 
Oh, he's buzzed. Oh, yeah, no. he's buzzed it. So Has he gone buzz? He buzzed it only yesterday, Arvo. So that's Does it look good or? Yeah, no, I rate it. Aerodynamic, he'll kick two. Would you, if he kicks two, will you do the same? Oh. <laughs> if he kicks four, I will. All right. Locked in? Yeah, if he kicks four, I'll. Oh, oh here we go. All right, here locked we go. In. Come on, Bailey. Come on, do Bailey. It for the boys. Kick five. And so he imagine can... a goal after the score. Oh, my it. God. That would actually be oh, I shouldn't have given it. It's, it's, anyway, it's live. It, we're, we're, it's on there. Oh, jeez. No, I don't think he will still. Let no, he will. Go, but he will. Have hope. He I need him. hope. No, no, anyway. I, don't, I don't think he'll get rid of that, though. No, he just said if he kicks four. That's gettable. Wait, what's his career best? I know, but actually, if you're going to make deals like that, boy, you have to be all in, mate, because, like, there's emotional attachment there. Like, you know? Nah, Can we settle for a trim? <laughs> It'd have to be, like, a like, two, two back and sides. Oh. Hey, no, no, no. Actually, no. Go back because to your Owen dad, validated mate. it on... Has now just validated the point that he will do whatever to his hair if he loses in Supercoach. Now you've just said it, you'd... Right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> Bri- <laughs> nah, it's, Bri- it's locked in. Brisbane to beat the Crows. Uh... Melbourne uh, to beat Carlton, which I'll, I'll be at that game. D's, uh, you boys, you know, I no, think there I'm was not a few... Sl- I'm not slipping on the D's. No, but early or before the season. Nah. Last four weeks nah. of hitting their Before the season and early scored. when they weren't playing nah. great, I said them as my tip for the flag, and I've said, but st- stood by it the whole time. And there hasn't been, like, laughs, but there's been, like, no. Mm. no. I've had a few looks, but... I think they've won four yeah, or five in a row. I haven't given you looks. I think they've won four or five in a row, and they're, they're going to pump... The Blues. And, uh, yeah, they're a flag. Um, Freo. <laughs> they're, a flag. <laughs> they're a flag. They're a flag. They're they're flag. They're, no, yeah. I, was, I didn't mean to say they're just, they're just a flag. They are a flag this be year. Be the flag. They are the flag. <laughs> Freo to beat West Coast. Um, Hawthorne Haw- 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 won't beat dogs, Connor. Uh, Western Bulldogs to win that. <laughs> Why not? It's like Utah. So they play good <laughs> footy there. They're coming <laughs> off. They beat Collingwood. They beat the best team in the league Richmond, last week, mate. You better believe it. Richmond to beat the Saners. <laughs> and Port... I think Port have lost four in a row, so they need they're to get due, back in the winners. Due for a win. They'll beat the Giants, nah, so Port that'll can't, cannot that'll be round us yet. out there. Um, but yeah. yeah, coaching the. Super. By the way, I did not agree to the hair thing. I'm just saying. You did. I, 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 I did. <laughs> I actually didn't though. See, I haven't shaken my hands on that, but you actually shook. I hands. I never shook hands. I, I I never shook hands saying, "Yeah, sure." You I'll, did shake hands. I did not. Yeah, you did. I said, "I I need." Take that to the jury, mate. It's four and one. Nah, five. Fine evidence. Fine evidence. Is it? There is evidence. Find it. Okay. Anyway, we're you're a s- coward. You are a coward. You're, Mate, you're long-haired. Muppet. You're an absolute coward, and you're going to lose in Supercoach. I'm not going to lose. Final start you. tonight. Well, yeah, oh, it's a, they, it's a, they? yeah, they do. It's a big week. Ooh, it's right first yeah. round of finals for Supercoach. Uh, we've got myself and uh, myself and Connor. Oh, <laughs> charity. <laughs> First, oh. first, first, fourth. It's it is charity. I think they captain last week. And, and I'm going to laugh my head off. And, oh, I'll cry my head off. And if, <laughs> if, and we've got Hugo and Blair matching up in the semis. Um, yeah, can't. Well, I, I am very nervous, even though I shouldn't be, but you just never know, do you? Um, but it all kicks off tonight, I guess. Um, Connor, how are you feeling with uh, your preparation? Could you? You know, cause the upset. Look, I'm not feeling. Oh, you never say never. I'm not feeling great, but from from my perspective, it's a free swing. You know, I've got, I've got nothing really to it's a lose. Kick of a nuts. I've got nothing really to lose. You've got plenty to lose, mate. So like, <laughs> I've got lots to lose. And I, I know you project it's way higher stuff like that, but I'm just really hoping, um, sort of maybe my lesser lights, underrated players, maybe a Nick Martin has. You know, the week of his life and you know, pull, <laughs> pulls out 120, which he can do. He can, doesn't do it that often. <laughs> which he can do. But he can do it. Uh, Mason Wood looking for a lot from him again. Um, and we need Dan Houston after 61 last week. He's been he's been in good form. We need him to go absolutely bananas. I don't care if they get beaten. <laughs> get 45. Give it to him at all costs. Do whatever you can. And hopefully, potentially, <laughs> if I have any players that play against the guys that you've got, yeah. Hopefully my lads just take your boys out and um, yeah, a few ACLs would. Yeah, be oh. handy. <laughs> you can't say that. A few ACLs, no, some no, crucial no. players would be handy. Oh um, no, <laughs> it's so bad. You can't say but that. But look, it's not the size of the the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. So I think I've still had a chance. And he, always, a lot of, he always uses that th- one. But there's he? a lot of fight in this dog, mate. There's a lot of fight in this dog, mate. And um, give us a bark. I'm going beta. <laughs> <laughs> they came bounding over. Uh, that was a bit more of a little Jack Russell. <laughs> give us, a, give us. He came bounding. 
<laughs> hey, come down here. <laughs> <laughs> And the, oh, meanwhile, sorry guys. Yeah, now nah, we need to just to tell the viewers to turn it down at that point. Well, oh, you no, asked me to do it, and I was I wasn't gonna let let you down. But <laughs> to my all the fans, the listeners, the watchers out there, I am I'm a hundred percent there. It doesn't sound like it at the moment, but um, look, I'm gonna um, attribute this win to all the fans out there. So I'm gonna get up this week. Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be a miracle if you do, honestly. Oh, it would, mate. But um, because you know, on paper happened. my team is almost undefeatable. I'm not even like you know tuning my own horn. It's it's a great team on paper. Well, a few wide outs with a tight hammy, mate. Throws a few spanners in the work, doesn't it? So hopefully that happens. Well, Hughes and I have got the other match up, and look, to be honest, I wouldn't mind having Owen. Um, I'm no seriously, four one record this season. Against no, you. but my time... Uh, I no, 4-2. Yeah, okay, 4-2. I'm not going to be respect back though. a few weeks ago. Yeah. Big Dacos going out. That I'm not lying. Hugo's works. in strife. Score yeah, last round, 1-4-7-5. <laughs> he wants to do a trade. I'm going to help someone out to I'll try it. I'm gonna help no, you can't, you can't do truces. You can't do truces. That's so unfair. It's not in the spirit of the game. That's like ball tampering. Um, but <laughs> you can't do that. Hugo and I, though... Hopefully Sicily's laid out. Our average per round, Hugo and I... One six four three for Hugo, one six five one for me, and we had that twenty point game the other week, um, and yeah, our season averages are eight points difference, so it could come down to the wire. I had a pretty bad performing week last week, but I do have Clary back in, and you've got Dacos out, so. Paper, mm. out. Mm. I think you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too confident. Um, I haven't looked at the team in long enough. Um, I got a you looked at it last week, didn't you? No, there was, I did it the week before, but <coughs> injuries have happened. Oh, no, just, well, I just looked at mine now and had to make a few changes, but I'm feeling confident after those. I'll make a few changes tonight at the footy. If I lose, I'm stiff because... No, you're not. You've, no, lo- you've am, only won my, four this whole year, man. You're not pro- stiff. If I lose, I'm stiff. My projector's <laughs> higher than Heroes and Blairs. And I, projector doesn't... Projector's pi- actually in But in my opinion, I think I'm probably... Like, I think I've been better players than them in the past 10 weeks. <laughs> I've just copped a bad the run. Ladder, mate, the the ladder doesn't to show get it. Four wins. <laughs> nah, nah, I think I've copped a bad run. Mate, when you lose by two, you lose by 13. Oh, you lose oh, by this. Um, yeah. There's story. a trend. Where the you tissues? Lose. Get the tissues. <laughs> yeah, but not by much. League mate. points. You're still losing, mate. League points. Owen, 64. Hugo, 48. Blair, 40. 16. Connor. He's a, there's an outlier but there, this guys. 16. This is where the big boys 16. come in. 16. Mate. None of that matters yes, if I get up this week. Days. None of that matters if I can get out this week. Six and I've got, a, I've got a good side. There's some underrated players in there. Mark Blissart, he's one. Mason Wood. Well, you want to get things right. You're talking about three I'm flags by 2022. Mark good player. Mark good player. Keep, keep him in your side, mate. He's, he, he'll, he'll do well. Mark Mason, Mason Redmond can go bananas. <laughs> he, he can go absolutely bananas. Yeah, we've had enough. Chris can go bananas. Blakey, oh, when he gets those running shoes on, <laughs> Jesus, he can go absolutely bananas as well. Oh, Luke Jackson, Luke Jackson you. coming off 173. How you like what? that? What? How you like that? <laughs> Damn, he might have been on my bench last week. I reckon because, <laughs> because <laughs> I definitely would have won if I had him in the team. <laughs> Bailey Dale even can, oh, he can bite off a kick or two, <laughs> you know? Like there's, there's a lot of potential there. Houston might be able to get it done alone the way he's been playing, so... Yeah, you got 61 week, last week. I know, but you were just saying that. You were just be, saying that before he that, he was so good. He was at like 160 the last two weeks before that. That's gap. No, true. When he was under the dome against Carlton, he got 45. <laughs> under the dome. And he rocked up, he racked up like um, 185. That was a good month ago. 185. No, it was not 185. It was. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, but if uh, I can get, I know it would be a miracle, but if I can get a win, it would be. It would be one of the best things since sliced bread, honestly. It would be one of the greatest. <laughs> for you, it would. Oh, for me, it would. For all the, the boys uh, are celebrated. Yeah, the me. Boys, yeah, we get Because then they'd, yeah, think, they'd think they've, <laughs> then they've got a better chance to beat me, but. But there's nothing in it no, for the winner. Except pride. Yeah, but. I guess. It, it's it's, yeah, it's gonna, this game if I win this, the hair rides on. Yeah. If I win this, because I'm going to go out and buy a trophy. We're not talking about Owen. <laughs> He's going to buy a trophy. I'm going to engrave a little trophy at Trophies and Gifts. And what's it going to say? What's it going to say? It's going to say. The underdog, the trophy. super coach draft winner. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's say, it's it's say, first it, it's say the twenty twenty three super coach draft winner, <laughs> Colin or whatever semi Colin, Connor Burns, <laughs> the most unlikely victory 
in the history of the game. <laughs> it's a big trophy to fit all that yeah, on it. In, in Wait, quotes. Might need to fit on a quotes, bloody grave. Miracles do it. happen. <laughs> Hashtag, it, hashtag, hashtag Nelson Mandela. After 72 years. <laughs> hashtag Nelson Mandela. Hashtag believe. <laughs> I think you're talking about more of an essay here. But <laughs> essay then. Yeah, she's got to be a good trophy. Well, I can't oh, wait to it'll put cost her in the you, It'll cost you an arm and a leg, mate, <laughs> to <laughs> get a bit of... Uh, oh, yeah, oh, I don't care, of... mate. The money that I'll, I'll win for oh. winning this... Uh, <laughs> You'll win nothing. ...outweigh the trophy, so... There's no win. There's no, There's no the prize. Line. The sponsorships that I can get <laughs> The sponsorships I can get for this could be ridiculously oh large. Oh, my God. No, nah, I mean, on that, we probably could get a little trophy engraved for the winner if we do it a yearly thing, but, I'd, look, I don't think it's going to have an essay on it like that. No, I'm keeping no. it if I win. <laughs> when I saw it, I'm not handing okay. it back. I'm not handing nah. it back in the preseason, mate. Yours can be I'm, your own, mate. Just, you have your fun. Even if I lose, I'm going to still say... Oh, Fourth out of like 16 teams. Like, <laughs> <and> <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh, man. Women's World Cup. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, Matilda's on fire. the Tillies. Yeah. Um, Same curve back. Yeah, managed to play in the final 10 minutes of the game. Do we need Canada. her? We don't know. Probably do. Well, um, there's B. Yeah. We don't mind her. I don't know. Oh. Mary Fowler's pretty good. I know what you've been saying, Best Mansell, but I still want to put her. I probably still want to put her on. It was yeah. risky. It was risky playing her just 10 minutes when the result was beyond doubt, wasn't it? Come on. Well, she nearly got injured. She almost hurt herself. Well, there was a reason why they played her because... Um, to give her touch, she can get that on the track. She's good enough. Come but on. You can't get the match fitness on the track. <laughs> oh, but she's good enough. It doesn't matter. He's pleading with her. It doesn't matter if but, she was um, on hiatus for a year, mate. Natural talent shines through, you know? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, she did look damaging, didn't she, when she, uh, when she came on in those final 10 minutes, but... The job was done already. 2 nil win against... Uh, who do we play? Uh, Denmark. Against Denmark. I was going to say Canada for a second. Been in yeah. Denmark now yeah, in the men's and women's. Corner. doesn't even know who we played. We've yeah, been yeah. in Denmark now in the men's and women's yeah. World Cups. So, uh, good stuff, Denmark. And, uh, oh, I've got nothing against them. But yeah, it's good, <laughs> no, to, it's just good. good to beat a European team. And now we've got Le Bleu on, uh, on Saturday. What? Yeah, well, that's what, what? their nickname, Le Bleu. What? Le Bleu. Le Bleu. Le Bleu. Le Bleu. English, Bleu. English Bleu. Bleu. please? Bro, what... <laughs> Bro, what the hell? Who? That's Le- just not how you pronounce it. <laughs> Le Bleu, yeah. Bro, did... So, so Russ... Yeah. France, so, Le Bleu. Mate, that's like... Oh, that's France. like, Le so Bleu, Russ, Bleu, Bleu, Bleu. Did, did the Jazz win tonight or did you guys lose? What? What the hell are you talking about, bro? That's what that's that's what we're dealing with here. Yeah, well... We don't know what man's... They're, 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 pl- they're playing at Suncorp tomorrow at 5 playing? o'clock. Well, we're France. 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 Just call them France. Le Bleu. <laughs> but tell us against Le Bleu. What the hell's a bleu? <laughs> I think right. sometimes it gets time to end the pod, and I think that do time you people is, butcher the English language? Uh, that the time French. is about <laughs> butchering the English. Oh, yeah. This kid, <laughs> oh, mate. No. First of all, you write an article, and you you wrote an article on this. You didn't even realize who we're playing. You're like, oh, who we're playing? Yeah. <laughs> Denmark, you know? <laughs> and then and then the blur. Oh, you guys just butcher the English language, mate. It's probably not even a word in the French language, mate. You know, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> right. But um, brutal. But yeah, you know we um. Yeah, we obviously have that game, uh, you know, quarterfinal uh, chance to play the winner of England and Colombia. Um, yeah, so still going on, and um, yeah, hopefully we can get there. And uh, yeah, kind of Tillies as uh, as Connor said. If we beat France, we will we'll win the World Cup. <laughs> there we go. Point now, because if, no, cl- cl- if we beat France, that's a that's actually a good call. If we beat France, it opens up, and especially no, if we beat France. And Colombia somehow, somehow knock off <laughs> the Poms. The Poms. I wouldn't be riding off which Columbia, Which would be though. nice. I know, but they're, they're massive, aren't they? They're like 72nd in the world, mate. Yeah, but have you seen what seconds. they've done this year? I thought Nigeria were bad. They were 41st, mate. That's nearly double. Mate, I'd pick Colombia to be my dark horse for this tournament, so I wouldn't be saying... Oh, mate, they, well, if, if there was a bit of you-know-what involved, they'd, they'd, they'd get up. They beat sure. Germany, who are third in the world. Oh, that's going to be over there. Jesus Christ. Or second, Christ. I think. But, yeah. Anyway, they they beat a really high team. If we beat France, Colombia beat uh, the Poms. Well, yeah, it's obviously. as good as one. Like we're, we're not losing, and it'll be then we'll get that public holiday, like oh. Albo um said. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyway, you want to keep this under the hour, so um. Yeah. Let's finish it off. What yeah. I mean, yeah. We probably should let. Well, I want to miss his footy at this rate, so we'll get it done. <laughs> No, nah, it's been a great episode, boys. Yeah, uh, definitely yeah. a fun one. Um, had a lot to talk about that one. It was <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely worth worthwhile. But um, 
no, we'll be all back next week um, in the studio. Thank you to all the listeners and um, watch, uh, viewers out there um, for tuning in. Uh, make sure to keep up to date with the socials and we'll catch you guys all next week. Thanks, See you then.